In this video, we will be going over importing data into MotiveWave. Importing historical data into MotiveWave can be done via CSV, ASCII, or Metastock database files. Now, with the comma separated BIOS file, it's a common format for many historical data services, so MotiveWave will automatically detect it when you specify any files of this type. With the Metastock database files, if they contain one or more instruments, then they may be imported into MotiveWave's historical database. So let's take a look here at a CSV file. So in this CSV file, typically you'll have a column with a date, a column with a time, a column with a open value, high values, low values, closed values, and volume values. Optionally, your CSV file may have a header that would state date, time, open, high, low, close, and volume. Now this specific data file covers up to April 15th, and this is minute data. Let's go over to Motive Wave. You'll notice here on this Microsoft chart, I have data here going to April 16th. If I close this up a bit more, You'll notice here it covers till April 16th at 1600 hours. And I'll show you why that's important. So let's click on File, Chart, Import Data. Okay, so from here we can select our data files. We click on Add. Now we can select one or multiple files. In this case, we're only going to select the one CSV file. But you also have options for Metastock data files or Metastock data directory files. So I'm going to select the CSV. I'm going to select from our desktop the one minute file. For time zone, you can choose a time zone for the input file. It's important for resolving the data time values for each historical price bar in the input file. So I'm going to leave this one as Toronto since we are in the same time zone as New York. We have the option of selecting an exchange for the instrument. I'm going to select NASDAQ. We also have the option of selecting trading hours, and if a value is chosen for trading hours, then it will be assigned to the instrument when it is created from this dialog. I'm going to select NASDAQ. Then we have the option here to adjust for stock splits, and if the file does not contain split adjusted values, then this will detect and adjust historical prices for splits. We have the option to automatically create instrument. Do not prompt. If we click on this, if the CSV file has a symbol in it, an extra column for a symbol, then you can select this. Uh, also, depending on your file name, for instance, in this case, if it was called uh, Microsoft, like MSFT, space, one minute, then it may be also picked up that way. We're going to leave it unchecked so I can show you the process of naming uh, or creating the instrument. You have the choice of replace existing data, which we want to do. Now, as I showed you before, the existing data goes to April 15th, while this goes to the 16th. And I did that on purpose to show you what it would look like when the data is replaced. Now, in regards to data, in importing data, typically brokers provide historical data in time frames of one minute, five minute, 30 minute, and daily. Those are the ones that are supported in MotiveWave. And the reason for that is practically any time frame can be built from those base time frames. Now, if it's Google and Yahoo, then only one minute, five minute, and daily will be supported. But in this case, we don't have a Google Yahoo workspace, so the full one minute, five minute, 30 minute, and daily will be supported. Now, monitor input file for changes. And what that does, if it's checked, MotorWay will monitor the timestamp on the input file to see if it changes in the future. If it does change, then the new data will be automatically loaded into MotiveWave when a chart is loaded, and I'm going to actually show you this. Okay, so let's click on Import. So here, it's not picking up a symbol name. As you notice, it's actually picking up the one here. It's going to assume that that's the name of the symbol. So we're going to put in MSFT. As you can see here, the exchange and the trading hours have already been picked up from the previous dialog, and the bar size is one minute. So we're going to click OK. It's imported. And now if you take a look at the data, you'll notice here 
there's no April 16th data. And that's because my file had April 15th only. Now, in regards to monitor input file for changes, so what I have here is this file here, for instance. Let's take a look at this timestamp on this file. So the timestamp here is 323, and this one here is 335. You'll notice the name is the same. Now watch what happens if I replace the file. So now that I've replaced it, and this one has a newer timestamp, if I go back to Motive Wave and reload the chart, so if I switch over, you'll notice now that I have the April 16th here data because the replaced file has April 16th data. Now, how is that useful? If you have, for instance, your, if you download end of day data automatically to the same directory all the time, or you replace it, then you don't have to go through the whole import process all over again. All you need to do is just simply flip and refresh your chart, and the data will refresh. Now, if your broker supports tick data, then you'll also have the ability to import tick data. So let's go over here to Apple. You'll notice here that I have, it's blank, and I can import tick data into there. So let's go over, first let me show you the, the CSV file for tick data. And you'll notice the format's the same. You have date and time, and then you have your values along with volume. So let's go over, file, chart, import tick data. We're going to add the tick data, CSV file. In the case of tick data, only CSV files are supported. Again, the time zone, I'll leave it by default. And in this case, I'll click replace existing data. Although in this case, I didn't have to um, because there is no data there, but let's click import. And now we have the tick data. Okay, so that's it for this video, and we'll see you in the next.